don't shoot your eye out, kid. All right, guys, this week we're going through the Taurus 856. We'll be doing a disassembly and reassembly. We'll also be doing a functions check. And at the beginning, we'll be showing the cycle of operations for how the cycle of operations for this weapon works. As always, we have our iPro on. We have a clear workspace with no ammo. And we have clear weapons. All the references will be at the end, down at the bottom. So we'll see you in a minute. Very quickly, we're going to go over the cycle of operations for this revolver. We have our iPro on. We are clear, as you can see. We will be using this dumbing round. So we are feeding and chambering. We are going to lock it. We're going to cock it. We're going to fire it. We're going to unlock it and extract it. And then we are going to eject our round. And that is a cycle of operations for this revolver. Let's go ahead and go over our tools for this week. Most important, our iPro. We'll be using these two blocks, as well as these two magnetic pans. If we have to, these two pliers, we'll be using these tweezers, a 1 8 punch, a 3 and 30 seconds punch. We'll be using gray screwdrivers, which are G2, G3, and H2. Our flashlight, of course, our weapon. Some neodymium magnets, our paper clips. We will use this dummy round. Of course, our hammer. And lastly, if we have to, a little piece of the greatest bonding tool of all time. All right, our first step is going to be to remove this roll pin. But first, we're going to clear this weapon again. As you can see, we are clear. I'm taking the 1 8 punch and our brass hammer. And I am going to drive the roll pin out of the grip. And I have the roll pin here. And now I will take the grip off. And we have a roll pin. I am going to put this roll pin back in there. And we are going to set this grip to the side. Just to make life a little easier, the next thing we're going to do is remove the yoke assembly. But first, we need to remove the yoke screw assembly. We're using the G3 screwdriver here. And just remember, it has a pin and spring in here. We will be going clockwise as far as things that we put in here. So I'm just going to quickly take this yoke off. That way, I don't have to worry about any ammo or anything getting in there. Next, we are going to take the rest of the side plate off. We're using our G2. And to remove this side plate, we're not prying. We are going to use the handle of our hammer. Let's go ahead and give her a little hit. And she comes right off. We're going to go over some of the main components here real quick. We have the firing retaining pin. We have the firing pin and spring. We have the hammer. We have the main spring assembly, the trigger spring assembly, the hand the transfer bar, the trigger, the cylinder stop. Internally, we still have the bolt. I'm going to flip her over. And we have the thumb piece and thumb screw. Just so I don't have to worry about the firing retaining pin falling out, I'm going to ahead and take that out now. Take the, the spring and firing pin out as well. And we'll set those to the side. So we have those removed as well. We're going to remove the main spring assembly. We have to depress the thumb piece and pull the hammer back and as you can see there is a little hole here in the mainspring assembly and we will take this paper clip and stick her in there and then we are going to go ahead and let her go forward and you can see that that mainspring assembly comes right out next we're going to remove the trigger spring assembly so first we have to depress the thumb piece and pull the hammer back and you actually have to pull the trigger back because there's a small hole inside the trigger spring assembly. And you need to put your paper clip in there like so. Okay, now I'm going to flip it over. And we do have to punch it a little bit. And she comes right out just like that. And we are going to set her to the side. Next, remove the hammer. She's on a little leg, so not too hard to remove. But I am going to push this 
springed off so I can get her off a little easier. And there's the hammer. Next, I'm going to remove this hand. I'm just going to use some tweezers. I'm using this box in case the spring comes out when I do this. You can see this detent spring came out here, but the spring did not. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and put a little piece of duct tape behind this so the spring doesn't come off while I'm trying to work. Next, I'll be removing the trigger, the transfer bar, and the cylinder stop. There's the trigger, the transfer bar. I will be using the tweezers for the cylinder stop. It's kind of like an operation piece. Next, we'll be removing the thumb piece and thumb screw. I am using the H2 screwdriver from Grace. And put her there and set her to the side. Lastly, we'll be removing the bolt. There's a small spring in there, so I'm going to take this neodymium magnet and just put it right over there in case we lose it it should stay right on there that is the taurus 856 fully disassembled go ahead and put our bolt back in with the spring here and try to keep it in there we can get it with our fingers next we will Reattach our thumb screw and thumb piece. And you can see it's notched already. Next, we will put our cylinder stop in. I am going to be using just the pliers. It's one of those temperamental pieces to put in. Next, we're going to reassemble the transfer bar and trigger. I have a neodymium magnet on here just to make it a little easier for me so it doesn't slip out it just goes right on this leg here and we can do a small functions check after we get it set to to make sure we're on okay and we are on next is one of the most temperamental parts of the entire reassembly and disassembly i will be removing this tape here and then I will put this plunger back into there where this tape is removed. And I'm going to take the hand. And if you can see here, the tall part of the hand is what actually engages that plunger and spring. And the small part of the hand is what actually sticks into the trigger itself. Okay, we have our hand back in with the hand pin and spring. Took a little bit of time, but now we're going to put the hammer back in. The hammer fits on this leg right here. And if you can see this little gap here, you can also see a notch here. So once you line those up, it's relatively easy to put the hammer back on. Next, we're going to reassemble the trigger spring assembly. As you can see here, there's a little ball on the end of this, and there's a leg on the opposite side here. So the ball goes right into the trigger, and the leg goes right into the frame right here, as you can see. We can pull our hammer back with the thumb piece. And that will allow us to remove the paper clip. Next, we're going to put our main spring assembly in. And what we need to do is grab our main spring assembly and orient it into the right slot. And there are two slots. There's a slot at the bottom of here, and there's a slot also in the hammer itself. And as you can see, it locks down, and then I can remove this paper clip. Next, we're going to put the firing pin assembly back in. I'm going to use this closed pin just to keep it open. 
And next, I am going to take the firing pin here. As you can see, there's a little notch. And it's going to go notch down with the spring end, of course. Okay, we have our firing pin in. And we're going to take our fire retaining pin and put that in there as well. Now that we're set, we're going to go ahead and remove this closed pin, and we have our firing pin set. Now we're going to put the side plate back on. It's very important that you notice, especially on this model, that there is a little notch on the end, and that needs to go inside there when you do it. So we're going to put this in, and we'll be back in a minute. Now we are going to drive in our two side plate screws. Now we're going to take our yoke and cylinder and replace the yoke and cylinder spring. So we're going to flip her over and just go ahead and get this yoke and cylinder back in. And we will close it. And then we will put in our yoke and cylinder spring. Lastly, we'll be replacing the grip and the roll pin. We will simply, we're just going to put the grip back on. And we have our blocks here, and we will take our roll pin and set it right over. And we are reassembled. Now that we're reassembled, let's go ahead and do a functions check. We know we're clear. Let's double check we're clear here. Okay, you can see I'm clear. I see I'm clear. Let's go ahead and close the cylinder. Let's try a single action. Let's try double action. Let's try double action. Let's try single action. So we are reassembled. All right, guys, this week we went through the Toyota Safe 56. We did a disassembly and we did the reassembly. We also did a functions check and we did the cycle of operations for this weapon. Now on to our references. We used the Gun Digest Book of Revolvers Assembly Disassembly 4th Edition. We used our SDI and FTH 202 Mechanics and Firearms Revolvers. Gun Digest Book of Exploded Gun Drawings 4th Edition. We used our Taurus A56 manual. And lastly, we used the Gunsmithing Pistols and Revolvers book, 4th edition. If you guys have any questions, leave them below and stay frosty.